Hello and welcome back to Information Table 1. So far, we looked into a couple of topics uh, from our bachelor course called IR0. Uh, specifically, we talked about text analysis and indexing. Then we uh, started talking about the content of this particular course, IR1. And as I told you before, uh, I want to split it into four major pillars, evaluation, document representation and matching, learning to rank and IR user interaction. So far, you've seen lectures on evaluation given by Van Gogh's Canulis, who did a lot of work on evaluation, a lot of research and teaching on that. Uh, and we always start with evaluation because we think this is a really crucial topic. So evaluation is as central in information retrieval as actually the ranking that we are going to discuss right now. So evaluation you've seen together with Vangelis and uh, today we will start with this set of videos. Let's say we will uh, start the topic of document representation and matching. Uh, so that's the second key topic because that's the whole point of IR systems. We have documents in many different ways. Uh, standard documents that you have on your laptop, uh, web documents, tweets can be seen as documents or SMS, um, any blog posts, news, paragraphs of a single document can be seen as separate documents. And so these documents are the pieces of information that we want to provide to users in response to user information needs. And we will do that through matching. So we will have a user information need and we will have a document and we will represent them in certain ways and then we will match them. So um, before we do all that, it's important to connect, uh, let's say, uh, technical side of IR0, that text processing, indexing, to high level ranking functions that we are going to discuss in the next video. So in this video, this is the intermediate uh, video. It's, it's kind of low level. It's not about ranking algorithms yet, uh, but it's already about um, matching documents uh, to information need or the other way around. So uh, the first thing you need to do when you have an information need in the form of a query, of course, it can be anything, it can be a spoken query, but in the end, you convert it into some text. And then actually you have to analyze it just the same way as you did the text, did analyze the text. So you did some text pre-processing, you did stop word removal, stemming, uh, you, you did tokenization. So basically all these things you usually do for each text, normalization, like low, uh, lower case in uh, segmentation into different words and stemming and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so you do exactly the same for the query. Otherwise, queries and documents don't match. So basically, I gave you an example of uh, running cat, I believe, something like that. So if you uh, do stemming in the text and you convert on all running and uh, other, for, uh, yeah, into run, and you don't do that for the query, then there is no match. So you should do the same uh, text pre-processing for queries as for documents. And to repeat that, uh, this is a nice picture from this book that I mentioned in uh, some of the previous video videos. So normalization like low case and uh, um, removing uh, full stops and commas, all the punctuation, then you may uh, do spelling correction. We didn't discuss that, but we, we do discuss this in the other courses. Segmentation, meaning extracting terms, engrams, uh, extracting noun phrases if you want. Um, there's no stop word removal, but you can do it. You can do stemming and more high level things like uh, extra understanding whether it's an entity or, uh, or a phrase or a phrase you did here. And then in the end, you have, uh, you have to have a query, rewritten query here that is processed exactly in the same way as your documents in your index. And then you can process this query using your index. So how do you use your index? Uh, it's important to mention that depending on the search system and especially in complex search systems uh, like web search engines or very large search systems, maybe pattern search, for example, uh, we usually have two phases of ranking. One is a relatively simple phase where you do kind of filtering. 
So first you do matching. This is Boolean, which means you have a query and you have all your documents and you only select those documents that, let's say, contain query terms. And matching may be a little bit more complex than that, but let's put it like this. So you only select documents that match the query. There's no ranking yet. You only know that this selected subset of documents has certain matching to the query. Then you do simple ranking with some very simple techniques that we will discuss next. Uh, you sort, sort them and then if you have more complex algorithms like learning to rank or uh, neural methods, well, neural methods are also part of learning to rank, then you apply the complex ranking only on top of a simple ranking. Basically you take top thousand, for example, out of simple ranking because simple ranking may rank millions of documents and here you may rank only one thousand. 10,000 documents because, well, applying learning to rank is slow. So you really have to filter first and then you apply complex techniques on top of that. So uh, that's how, let's say, a large search uh, system would look like. But of course, some simpler search systems may stop here. You did simple ranking. Uh, if, if you use Lucene, for example, that's what it provides you. It gives simple ranking and that's it. That's also fine. But as I said, uh, the general picture is this. So we are going to talk about matching right now in the next few minutes. And in the next videos, we will move to simple ranking. And in the next, uh, well, there will be one of the sets of videos about complex rankings, for example, learning to rank. So uh, now, as I said, we connect uh, low level methods from previous videos to high level methods of next videos. Now we have indices, we have inverted lists. These are inverted lists. Uh, left and right are the same inverted lists. And there are different strategies for traversing this inverted list. For example, we have a, we have a query, we have a, a term in a query and we need to select documents that contain this term. So one approach is a query, um, an inverted list at a time, term at a time. So basically you have a term university, let's say a query University of Amsterdam. If you remove stop words, it's so just university and Amsterdam. Or here we have three terms, let's not remove stop words. Let's have university of Amsterdam or actually of probably has the longest list. So this is of, this is university and this is Amsterdam. So what you can do first, uh, you can take the word of and go through its inverted list and retrieve all the documents from it. Now, uh, these are document IDs here, two, three, five, till 10. And these are so-called weights that I discussed while uh, talking about indexing. And these weights are the results of ranking functions that will be shown in next videos, like the M25, language modeling, TF-IDF, and so on. So you go through all the documents for only one term and you uh, store all these weights in memory. Then you take another term, university, and you go again. And if you see a, the same document that you saw before, you just add this weight to that weight in your memory uh, array. And then there's a new document, you just add to your array, this is the same document, you add the, the weights and so on. And then you go to the uh, term Amsterdam and you do the same. So uh, clearly there are advantages and disadvantages. Advantages, you just, well, clearly, uh, uh, the, you only have one list at a time uh, to, to process that's easy, understandable, but at the same time, you have to have the whole array of uh, weights in memory, which could be, um, well, uh, just too many because an inverted list for the word of could be huge. Many, many documents containing the word of. Now, another approach is, is a document at a time. And in that case, the drawback is that you have to have different pointers in different lists because you're going to traverse all the three lists, lists for off University and Amsterdam at the same time. So you first uh, take the document with the lowest uh, ID, you check its weight, then you go to the next document three, then you go to document four and go to document five and see that it occurs in two lists, document six and then document seven. So you move from left to right, not from top to bottom. So these are just two different approaches and depending on the application, of course, you uh, can go with either one of them. Um, 
and in practice, especially in web search, uh, because this uh, this book is specifically about web search engines. And uh, this book gives uh, the following recommendations. If you use queries, then uh, do the conjunction of terms, which means try to retrieve documents that contain all terms. So if, if uh, talking about these lists, what we can do, we can retrieve um, documents that contain all the words University of Amsterdam. And in that uh, case, we need to uh, intersect this list, right? Or we can do disjunctive mode um, that we retrieve documents that contain at least one term. So at least of or university or Amsterdam. Now for many applications, that's actually a good approach, especially for applications where you want to achieve as many relevant documents as possible, such as uh, patent search and medical search. In that case, you'd better use or, and you concatenate all the lists. Now in web search instead, there's so many documents in every list that even if you uh, make the intersection of those lists, you still have many. Uh, so uh, it's recommended to use and for web search, but for other search engines, you can use other operations. Uh, usually document at a time is used for web search, but as I said, depending on your application, you may go with a, a different strategy. And uh, um, yeah, uh, basically a score is computed as a linear combination of query dependent and query independent scores that we will not cover that much. Basically, uh, we will mostly talk about query dependent scores, which means how can we score a document given a query? Uh, can we use BM25 or learning to rank? Now, query independent scores, they only score documents. So there's no query. We only decide whether the document is good in general. And that can be done based on, I don't know, its HTML structure or the length or a very um, widespread technique to do that is page rank. Page rank doesn't depend on any query, but still gives uh, a score to every document. It's just for you to know, but that's not the point of uh, this particular course. So uh, that's it about matching. Well, matching in, in a low level terms, matching between a query and a document high level in terms of how actually we match terms, we are going to discuss next and we will just call it simple ranking. Uh, so it's a little bit of confusion. So I call it document representation and matching. And by matching, I consider all this picture as, as matching, but also our matching directly involves ranking because as long as you do matching, you compute scores and using those scores, you can rank documents. So that's what we are going to discuss next. Um, and um, yeah, that's where you can read again. I highly recommend this book for all the low level questions about uh, crawling, indexing, uh, period processing. Um, text analysis less so, but for all other topics, yes.